Yes. So welcome to Jail Soul podcast number one, our, our first podcast ever. And I promise you'll be able to tell throughout this entire podcast. <laughs> um, I'm Ernie Raposa. I'm one of the co-founders of Jessel. Uh, I'm here with Dan Dialmita, another one of our co-founders, and uh, Scott Cray, who has a long career in TV, radio, other media production, and he's here to help us stay on track and, and make sure this thing actually looks like a podcast, sounds like a podcast at, at the end of the day. Scott, tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. You got us off to a good start on the first podcast, so the the tough part is over. Um, yeah, so I uh, come from a background in in broadcast, uh, getting my video production degree uh, way too long ago to even mention the year, and um, worked my way through various uh, sports and news broadcasting. And then uh, one day, somebody said, "You'd be really good working with students with uh, with." kids uh because i had the opportunity to do that in my career and and i said uh yeah okay we'll give that a shot so i then became a video production teacher somewhere along the line and i've been doing that for the last uh 60 million years ago yeah certainly feels like it so yeah i'm I'm actually just on this podcast to keep you guys in line and because i like seeing myself on camera that's what it all comes down to you know uh so dan tell tell us a little bit about yourself what's your background Sure. Uh, yeah, I, I started as a chemist, uh, which is really strange. But many moons ago, I was a scientist in a lab and um, transitioned into technology. And I've spent most of my career, 20 years or so, in software. Um, so first as, um, you know, just a guy who was tinkering around, helping people up. Uh, now I actually am the head of product management for a software company in life sciences space. So still working with scientists, but so far from being a chemist. Um, yeah, and uh, you know it's 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 interesting being here because you know podcasts were not a thing when we started, and you know it was it was never really a, a strong point for scientists to be front and center in the space. But you know, transitioning into product and product management has made me more of a people pe- person, um, which is fantastic. And yeah, I'm I'm here to help out some folks uh, as I can. And you're a good example of what I tell a lot of my students who stress so much about what they're going to go to college for and where they're going to go to college. And sometimes I'll just tell them, you know, it doesn't mean that this is what you're going to do for the rest of your life, right? Oh, exactly. I mean, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do when I grow up. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy, um, which is sort of, you know, where we are here for. Um, I, you know, I, I've been in my career for uh, a long time. I've worked since the day I was 16, um, if not before that, you know, had little side hustle jobs, if you will. Uh, at many times in my, my life, I've had multiple jobs at the same time. And, uh, you know, about six, seven months ago, I decided to take a break um, and, and walk away from what I was doing and say, hey, what, you know, where, where do I want to go and what do I want to do and um, get away from the everyday in and out uh, of the world and try and figure out, all right, let's let's take an overall look at what's going on uh so i so i, so I walked away from the career and and just had no job <laughs> not one not two um and like you're saying to your students you know you don't know what you want to do until you just you know you kind of go through that path my my path has been very unusual um but i've appreciated it the whole way and Ern, you, you do a lot of work in your career as a leadership coach and you're helping people find work and hopefully ultimately happiness. Uh, What is it that you're seeing uh, these days in the job market? Yeah, thanks, Scott. Uh, I've I've done kind of, I'd say, lots of different things too. And and Dan and I uh, sometimes compare notes about um, the, let's say, uh, different directions our career has has taken us based on where where, where it was where we started out. Um, I work in technology by day. I've uh, uh, I've been just, uh, let's say, a, a generalist IT guy for for the bulk of my career, uh, but but have been interested in people throughout all of that. Uh, during the pandemic uh, and being stuck at home, uh, where where I hadn't really been able to be with people, uh, I looked for other things to do to kind of fill that tank, and I became a, a leadership and career coach. And it's been 
tremendously rewarding and transformative for me personally, but I've also been able to reach out and, and work with people one-on-one, -on -one, which I, I hadn't really been able to do in, in previous roles or in my day job per se. So it, it was super rewarding for me to get to know people, figure out, help them figure out uh, uh, what it is that uh, their, their, uh, that really fills their tank and, and what their ne next act would be or what their next career jump would be um, based on what really uh, 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 makes their antenna tingle versus, hey, it's just the next step on the career ladder. So, uh, so for me, um, it, it was also an opportunity to just spend more time talking to my friends um, uh, on those nights and weekends to, to see what everybody had going on. And then Dan and I just started talking one day about his journey and, and how the, um, the job search is not really all it's cracked up to be, especially during this great resignation where it, 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 the media tends to make this sound like, uh, yeah, hey, everybody's getting a job, you should too. Lots of people are jumping into the job market for that grass is greener experience, and they're realizing, yikes, this, this is this is not as easy as as uh, folks on LinkedIn and Twitter uh, make it make it sound. Uh, so so Dan and I started sharing some of our own experiences. We've been on both sides of the job search, and uh, we thought, wouldn't this be a cool way to just get people to the table to, to help folks that are on that journey thinking about doing something different? Um, and and this was born. So Dan, can you, Ernie, touch base a little bit about reality versus impression, especially yeah. when you have a lot of online presence, not just through mainstream media, but just uh, from an ind individual standpoint, uh, people will, you know, sort of uh, latch on to trends. Mm -hmm. And sometimes as Ern alluded to, that isn't reality. So I know you had quite the journey. What, what is reality when it comes to job searching? Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. <laughs> Reality is interesting. Um, you know, I, I, my career has been um, almost led by where I was and not so much of where I wanted to go. Um, I've been extremely fortunate that I have had multiple roles that were based on network connections. You know, someone would leave my company and go here and then they'd recommend me or suggest it. And you know, I, I got to be honest, since my early, early jobs, I haven't had to use a resume. Um, again, extremely fortunate, probably not everyone's experience. But when I realized I was, I was, I was sort of um, not comfortable with what was going on anymore. I just, like I said, I was, you know, I decided to take a break. So I walked away and I, you know, I've been in life science informatics space for a long time. And I thought, Hey, you know, there's a lot of technology out there and I'm a pretty well-rounded guy. You know, I'm pretty awesome. Uh, I'm a product manager. I've been uh, a coder, if you will, for a little while, a bit of a hack coder, but um, let me take a shot at looking at what's out there uh, outside of this industry. And so um, walked away and started just applying for jobs. And, you know, I went through the basic fang companies that you're looking at the Facebooks, the Googles, et cetera. And I got callbacks and I was like, see, I'm awesome. I got a callback. Facebook wants to work with me or Google wants to work with me. And then I didn't get the job <laughs> uh, and it was uh, enlightening. You know, it's, you know, it's not that I'm not awesome uh, at what I do. I have a very niche experience and I'm still really good at my job, but it was just, I wasn't prepared for the application process. Um, and, and I say that because it's different than, you know, maybe 20 years ago, you know, 20 years ago, you'd apply, you'd send a resume, someone would call you, you'd shake hands and you either got the job or you didn't. Uh, now the experience is very different, uh, especially with, you know, all the online work we've had to do because of uh, shutdowns and whatnot and, you know, virtual remote. And so I, I started looking around at, you know, well, how do I get prepared? You know, I, I suddenly found myself talking to many, many different industries, different companies, and some callbacks, some not. I got to a point where... Um, you know, I was just getting rejection after rejection after rejection. And, and truth be told, I turned down some jobs. You know, this isn't me saying, oh, my God, I'm a starving artist and I can't get work. Um, I had some opportunities that were brought to me, again, through contacts and networking. And I didn't feel that they were the right fit. And that's for both of us. You know, if, if, if I'm not comfortable, um, I'm probably not going to do a great job. They're not going to be happy. I'm not going to be happy. It's just going to end up back where I was. 
So, um, but the ones that I was going for, the you know, the interesting ones, I found first everyone has a different hiring process. <laughs> it's not easy. Uh, some people do phone calls. Some people do video meetings. Mm -hmm. Some people don't even want to talk to you. You're just a, a, a electronic system. I actually had an interview, um, and I say interview lightly, that I didn't talk to a single person, but I had to look at questions they sent me and record my video responses back to them. Um, and I, I'll be honest, that was the, one of the strangest ones to me because you're sitting there uh, just staring at your, your camera and trying to act as if there's a person listening to you, um, sort of like we are right now, <laughs> but there, at least there's two other people on the other side. And this was really just, you know, just talking to this camera, answer the question and send it off to them. And, you know, maybe look at the job. So it's, it's, it's really strange out there these days. Certainly a lot different than it was even just, you know, probably 15 years ago. We don't even have to go that far back. Um, and for people that may be watching this podcast right now that maybe are thinking about making a change or they're in a situation where they, they've had to make a change and they haven't been in the job market for a while, this could be a real shock to them. And uh, so I guess I'll ask either one of you, how does Jussel help? with this different process that exists. And even for those that are, you know, are familiar with the modern hiring practices, it could be a little overwhelming for them too, I'm sure. Yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll jump in and, um, you know, hand it off to Earn. It's more of his core expertise. But, you know, when I started thinking about, uh, when, I, when I started getting a little bit more experience in what was going on, uh, I, I found it was hard to find a lot of the resources. I know there's a lot, probably a lot of resources out there and it's probably a lot of podcasts, but I ended up getting a job coach and I started going to certain websites and starting getting some information, but it's also kind of scattered out there. Um, and I thought, you know, hey, there's probably a lot of people out there in a, a similar situation. Well, I know there is, you know, great reshuffle, re resignation, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, there's people open to work everywhere. And I thought, hey, you know, if we can put together a, a small community and help some folks, again, I'm not expecting this to be, um, you know, anything different than what might be out there already. But if we reach 10 people that the other systems didn't reach, then let's help those out and, and kind of go from there. Right. And, and Dan, over the last, what, six to eight months, um, you were very, normally we've, we've known all, we've all known one another a, a long time. Um, Dan is probably the most reserved of the three of us, right? So uh, for Dan to put himself out there on LinkedIn, I mean, you were very transparent, very public uh, about what your journey was and, and uh, both successes, failures, or even just engaging the community. So you've built a, kind of your own following, your own brand out there around, hey, this is not as easy as it looks. Here's what I'm learning along the way. Um, how can we accelerate that and expand the reach of, of um, what, what you've experienced and what I'm sure uh, the community, the broader community out there has seen um, to, to uh, help uh, give people a, let's say, a smaller array of, of information versus having to just sit on LinkedIn all day and read, read posts, right? So, so we're hoping that this, this platform, this community will give folks a little bit more of a one-stop shop around tips and tricks, um, uh, insights into uh, not only getting a new job, but maybe I shouldn't be leaving my job because um, I'm not sure what I want yet, um, or just uh, support in general around what this uh, means for you and, and your life. There's just so much to unpack there. And we know that we've just to touch the tip of the iceberg. So that's why we'll be inviting uh, uh, guests who specialize in this. So career coaches, recruiters, um, folks who uh, might be more uh, um, likely to recommend starting your own business. So business coaches, where do you even get started? So we have some folks that are, are that will be joining us to, to talk about that. And uh, for, I think for folks who have been through this, who, who are seeing their job journey take longer than they expected. Uh, even someone who comes at this from a therapy perspective around, you need to be able to take care of yourself um, because you are probably thinking, I've got more, a mortgage, I've got a family to feed, I've got all of these pressures. Um, that, that 
not, not being able to get that job uh, can really do a number on, on your state of mind and your health. So I, I feel like there's just so much opportunity here to drive into the conversation. Um, and, and that's what we want to be able to do here uh, with, with this, uh, with this podcast. Yeah. We want to, we want to add some, you know, job seekers that are either actively pursuing yeah, right. uh, new, yeah. new roles, um, even switching tr- uh, careers, maybe someone who just landed a role and has some new enlightening information that can help someone else. Yeah. Here's um, what I saw. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, and, you know, and Scott, you know, you're, I, I think your story is interesting as well. You, you transitioned your career and I see a lot of teachers. Um, so you went into teaching right. <laughs> from broadcasting uh, and I see a lot of teachers looking to transition out and, and do something else and maybe in a tech space. And I see a lot of folks trying to transition different jobs. So, um, you know, some of that information could be useful too. Like how, you know, how did that happen for you? I, I know you kind of briefly touched on it, but what was that feeling like? Well, a lot of what Ern had mentioned, you know, the whole need to have a community like Jussel uh, to be able to join and, and have that commonality and understand that what you're feeling is okay. And others uh, may be feeling the same way. And so getting into teaching, uh, and, and so a lot of the fears that, that I had getting into teaching actually happened after the first year. So the first thing is I'm leaving a job that I've been doing for about 13 years to go into this new field of, of teaching, new to me, of course, um, and having that fear of, you know, I'm the new guy in the house and also I teach video production. And when you need to cut back on the budget, it's not the English teachers that go first when you have a state mandated testing here uh, where I'm from in Massachusetts. So, um, you know, I, I had a, a lot of nerves about taking that leap and Ern, you spoke to me uh, when you talked about people having, you know, to put food on the table obviously I needed to do that and I'm in a dual income household. So putting food on the table wasn't the worry. It was paying the the mortgage that I had just gotten. I think I had, I purchased my house and I think I got this new job like, like six months later. So it was nerve wracking. Fast forward a year, the year goes great, big budget cuts. And uh, 20 teachers got laid off from the school district that I, uh, that I worked in. And, and I found myself for the first time in my life uh, without a job. And fortunately was, was resourceful enough and was able to uh, continue working without too much downtime. But I, I don't know what would have happened five, 10, even now, 15 years down the road where it would be a little harder to market myself because I'm going to cost more. In a, yeah. in a school district. So there's always that challenge. And Dan, you talked a little bit about how people have changed careers and you're seeing teachers coming into tech. I see teachers across the country that I'm in touch with that are, are leaving the field uh, just because of how things have been in the last couple of years with the pandemic. And many would say that we're kind of sort of out of that right now, but in education, we're not. We're gonna be catching up for a couple more years. So. Uh, that's causing a lot of um, sort of new uh, stress on the job, and many have uh, sort of jumped ship, for back of a better, uh, better term, and and getting into different fields. Uh, certainly, teachers are qualified to do many things right. in many industries uh, because of a lot of the soft skills that they have. So, um, well, I don't, I don't think it's soft skills. I mean, if if I were to think of a teacher, it's uh, there's it, you know, again, just my experiences in software companies, I could see a teacher jumping into a training management position in no time. Right. I mean, yeah. adults are no better than, than kids. Yeah. <laughs> they need to be yes. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, and, and, you know, kept in line and, and whatnot. And the, the opportunities that, uh, you know, as, as tough as the past few years have been um, globally, the opportunities that technology has provided, you know, suddenly we're seeing, wow, I, I have access to this company. It's across the, the country that I never did before. And I can work from home. That's, that's amazing, you know, and um, it took something terrible to, to get us to this point, but people are more willing now to jump into these uh, just these pools of unknown because of that uh, access, you know, Oh, I, wow. I'd always love to work for Acme corporation, you know, but they, they, they're out of Wisconsin and I don't want to move to Wisconsin. Right. Right. So, um, you know, so I, I see people a little bit, braver 
uh, which is great. <laughs> uh, but with that, that courage comes, you know, a little sense as Ernst tried to mention, you know, it might not always be great to just jump in to the unknown yeah. and say, I'm just going to bet it all. Well, um, well, and now, now you have the, uh, you're starting to see in the news, the great resignation of regret, right? Yeah. People who have jumped ship because of that fear of missing out are like, Ooh, I might get a higher salary in a different job and all of my problems will be left behind. You know, there a lot of the problems in, that you see at, that your typical company are just exist in different forms at, at the other company. Some of the fundamental, like if you work for X size company, a lot of the challenges you see are essentially the same unless you're switching careers completely. Um, and and the, the challenge too on the we're looking at this through the lens of the job seeker mostly, but on the the recruiting side, on the HR side, they're just overwhelmed by candidates. And so the, the dichotomy you have is on the companies are saying, we just can't find good people. And the, the people on the other side of that wall are saying, I'm right here, but right. your applicant tracking system is weeding me out because of some wonky anomaly. Um, and, and that's why there's tools out there like JobScan and other things to, to, to help help you really line up to um, what, what the job description specifically is. But um, recruiting organizations are, are really uh, uh, having to wade through uh, candidates and, and you see that on LinkedIn, you see a job get post and over the span of an evening, you're like, wow, hundred people just applied to this thing, right? How, how do they, how do they manage that? So, um, so companies are struggling, job seekers are, are struggling to, to get noticed. And, and the days of, I'm just going to, to hit submit on, on LinkedIn and they'll call me in a few days are gone. I mean, it, it's, it's, uh, I still get calls from things I applied to months ago, <laughs> right? Right. Uh, and and so it, it, companies are really uh, struggling to keep up. Um, and uh, there are lots of systems out there for recruiters and companies to help find the right candidates, um, but there really isn't a lot out there for folks who are on their job search uh, to to just help them just uh, get themselves noticed and and help them manage that. So helping with organization, uh, helping sort of as another recruitment tool, and then yeah. having that community-based uh, aspect uh, to sort of help people through maybe some of the mental game, if nothing yeah. else, or at least get them to feel like they're part of a community as they go through this. It sounds like you guys have everything covered with Jussle. Yeah, uh, hopefully a little entertainment in there because uh, we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> this yeah. is our does, first does podcast. Anyone... Does anyone juggle? I think with the name Jussel, I feel like that would just flow in with the brand. Juggle? Well, yeah, like like somebody could just be like, you know, juggling ping pong balls or something on one of the screens. No, that works. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah right. sure. Perhaps we could get somebody that might be looking for a job in the juggle training category to, uh, you know, help out with that. And and fantastic. I mean, we, we could have our own application process where you know, is it is it is it uh, flame or no flame? Um, can you sing a song while juggling? Uh, so we'll have to have some criteria. Multi-tiered process. Yes. Guys, before we wrap things up, I'm going to throw a little curveball at you, something fun. Uh, so a little fun question of the episode. If you could only have one personal item on your work desk, what would that item be? And by the way, folks, I did not give them an advance uh, warning on this, so... Uh, Ern, any thoughts as you look around your personal office at home and see what it is? So everything right now that you're looking at gets eliminated except for one item. What do you need to keep there? So I have here on my desk. Um, We're going to get a real visual right here. Oh, what? It's a can of Play-Doh. <laughs> and there's a story behind that. My very first job was at Hasbro and um, they made Play-Doh there in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. And uh, a toy um, company it, as well and, and game company, board games. Right. Yep. Yep. And, and it helps me kind of remember where I'm from and where I started. And it's a, uh, it still smells great. Right? So <laughs> it's kind of the smell of childhood. Um, and then on those stressful days or when you're uh, doing your very first podcast, it's something that you can squeeze. And uh, uh, so it's a stress ball that, that you know, kind of sticks to your hand. And uh, fun fact, if you have a squeezy toy or something similar, uh, it, it, it's been proven by 
I read this in a random article, so you, have, you might have to check my facts. That, uh, uh, squeezy toys uh, help with creativity. So if you're okay. stuck on a tough problem and, and you're, you're trying to think through a solution, potentially having like one of those spinner balls, those, those spinner toys or a little bit of Play-Doh on your desk. Good to know. I'm looking around my desk and I have nothing pliable at all. So that might explain a lot, actually. Although if I'm on a desert island, zero utility. Um, (laughs) Oh, no, it wasn't a desert island. It was on my desk. So 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 there's value there. Yeah, that's 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 a different podcast. That's going to be hard to follow up on. But I did see you leave screen for a minute. So you found something. I I did. And uh, so uh, very cliche, but I'm a big Alice in Wonderland fan. Um, And so I'm going to go with um, I don't know if you can see him. But the blue caterpillar who nice. constantly asks, who are you? Uh, it's a constant reminder of, you know, who are you? <laughs> so, right. um, you know, sort of like, you know, remember your why and all that stuff. You know, it started way back when, um, when he was very adamant and asking Alice, who are you? And she just didn't know. You know, she just constantly was confused on that. And you just continue to ask. Um, I think it's a very important question, especially when you're doing your job search. Um, so that will remain on my desk for a while. That's awesome. I love it, guys. I, what, what about you, Scott? I know. I'm, I'm real. I'm looking around. Well, so, you know, my wife might watch this podcast, but this is something I had thought about when I asked uh, you guys the question is, what would I do? And uh, I'd actually probably keep a picture of my wife and I on my desk, um, not because she might be watching the podcast, but because uh, similar to what you were talking about, Ern, it kind of brings me back to my roots and you know, in the end, we hope to love our job and we're doing it for more than just the paycheck, but we initially start working for a purpose. And if not for family, uh, then for who? To help provide, to get a roof on the, over your head and, and food on the table. And uh, one day uh, the jobs will come and go and hopefully we still have family. That's, that's what's left over. So uh, yeah, this little uh, oldie but goodie right here. My wife and I go way back, just like the three of us do. Yeah. Way to get us in trouble with our wives, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> Completely unintentional. <laughs> Guys, this has been fun. Uh, if someone is interested in being on the podcast in the future, how can they reach out to you guys? So we, uh, we have a website. Um, it's not much but a landing page at the moment, um, but we do have an email address that is hello at justle.co. Um, also, you know, LinkedIn, if you can find us, I don't think you're going to find many DL Vitas out there. So uh, have at it. I'm out there. Um, and, you, you know, we'll, we'll put a little flash logo at the end and let people know what our information is. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a, uh, we also have a survey monkey out there for folks to uh, tell us a bit about their, their journey um, that we can tack on to the end. And uh, if you, that also includes in the survey, if you'd like to be uh, a guest on the podcast to give us your your information or just shoot us a note at hello at jessel.co. Um, we'd love to have you on. That's awesome. So once again, send an email out, hello at jessel.co. This is the end of the first ever of many podcasts, I'm sure. So uh, thanks, guys. It's been fun. Uh, on behalf of myself, Scott Cray, thank you, Dan D'Almeida and Ernie Raposa for being on the show. And we'll see you around next time. So long. Thanks, Scott.